Good afternoon, this is Charles Kelly, Money Tips Daily, bringing you money tips to help you save, earn, invest, accumulate and enjoy more money. Well, today I want to talk about property and how to transfer property from a limited company uh, from your own name into a limited company without incurring the dreaded uh, capital gains tax, which is a tax paid on, on your gain when you sell an asset like a property and how to also avoid stamp duty. A lot of landlords have been deterred from, from doing this due to these penal, penalizing laws that were brought in by, by George Allen Osborne. Uh, okay, but before I start, if you, if you want to get back to basics and learn how to manage your money, how to uh, accumulate money, how to invest, how to build up wealth over time, then do check out my free training, uh, which is Mastering Your Money the Smart Way, which I'll put a link up to, uh, and you can you can look at that absolutely free to help you get back to basics and start managing money, because a lot of people are still not doing that uh, in, in countries like, like the UK, US. Obviously, we've got soaring costs uh, of, of living, plus interest rates going up, and, and all the rest of the problems we know that are there. Uh, now has never been a better time to learn how to manage your money. Now, landlords with more than three properties in their own name, these are landlords who've got it in their personal names, which is the way everyone, pretty much everyone used to do it uh, before 2017, uh, or people who are paying higher rates of tax uh, should consider moving the property from uh, a, a, their own name into a limited company. And it's about you know, just saying, well, I'm putting this property here in from my own name into a limited company. Now, the problem is, is that when you, you move that property from your name into a limited company, then what? Then do you, in, you would normally incur capital gains tax and pay stamp duty as well. So this is something we, we obviously want to avoid. And this is, this is what's been holding people back from doing this uh, important work uh, because everyone was sort of stifled by this. You know, oh my God, you know, this tax is coming. Now, th this, this goes back uh, to over five years ago now, uh, George Osborne discussed this tax in 2015. The, the law was changed in 2017 and he introduced this punitive section 24 tax changes, penalizing millions of buy to let landlords, uh, in, in imposing higher taxes on them uh, because most of them, including myself, had these properties in our own personal names because that was the way you did it. You just bought the property in your personal name or a partnership, a couple of partners, uh, and you, you got the mortgages. That's the way the mortgage industry worked. They, they generally didn't like uh, limited company loans, and, and a lot of lenders still don't. The average high street lender will not lend to a limited company. It's crazy, really, but that's, that's the way they are. So you still have to go to more specialist lenders to get limited company loans, and they're charged at a higher rate without... You know, there's no extra risk there. You're still getting the, the guarantee from the, the, the owner or the director. Um, I, I don't know why lenders have not adapted to this. But basically, using a company structure can uh, save you hundreds of thousands of pounds of tax over, over time. But it can also make it easier to, to pass this property on to your children, your grandchildren, your, your relatives without in, incurring uh, capital gains tax. So it's the property is, is still the property, but you're putting it into a, a company structure or company wrapper. And that property then is owned by the company. And, you know, you can divide the shares of that company. You can pass on shares to, to family members. And, and if you do so at the right time and with the right time and in the right way, you, you could avoid paying that dreaded or your family will avoid paying that dreaded inheritance tax. I've seen this at first hand. I've seen people having to sell properties that are perfectly good cash flowing rental properties, sell those properties just to pay the capital gains tax due. And, and the, the, the HMRC want their, their money. They want their pound of flesh. Uh, you, you can't say, well, I'll pay you another time. You know, it's got to be done before the property is released. And it's a lot of hassle going through the probate uh, process as well. You know, especially if you've got mortgages and lenders involved, it, it's a huge nightmare if it's not done properly. So this is one way you can avoid this. Um, now, the process is, is complicated. It, it's legal. OK, there's no uh, funny thing going on here. It's a legal process in conjunction with HMRC rules, but it does require specialist advice. It involves uh, in, in initial stages getting these three properties and, you know, then moving those into a, an LLP and then eventually moving them into a limited company structure. But you could also, with the right advice, create a tax free 
pot of money based on on the equity in the property, and and that's something that you know the the, the accountants would would uh, that, that I deal with the tax specialists that I deal with would be able to explain in in more detail. But if if you are a landlord or a property investor with more than three, that's more than one, two, three, you know, three or more properties in your own name, then contact me, email, and message me. I I, I think. It's maybe not worth it unless you've got some massive property in, in, in if you've only got one or two, it may not be worth it because there are fees involved and charges and ongoing costs. But if you've got more than three properties, these will more than be offset by uh, the, the tax that you will save. And the advisors I deal with will, first of all, give you a questionnaire to see where you are, uh, where, where, where you are with your property whether you're a basic rate taxpayer, a higher rate taxpayer, what other assets you've got, what other debts you've got. And then from that questionnaire, they will produce a free report for you and they'll involve your own accountant because you, you might have an accountant that is really like, almost like a bookkeeper, really. They're just doing your accounts every year and saying, this is what, what tax you've got to pay. People I'm dealing with are tax planning specialists and they've done over 80 of these types of cases and all been successful, not been queried by HMRC so they've got a vast experience in this market and this is something that the ordinary accountant probably wouldn't be able to do or even attempt to do so they will involve your accountant they're not after you know stealing you from your accountant you can carry on dealing with your accountant that's fine uh, so they want to reassure them but message me if you're interested if you've got more than three properties in your own name and you'd like to do something about the tax burden and uh, you know maybe move that out of a uh, your own name into a limited company for the, you know future tax planning and possible inheritance tax. Now, a lot of people have got involved with schemes like oh, putting their rental income to a limited company, a management company, but these things generally don't work. Do it the proper way with, with advice. Yes, it will cost money. Yes, it takes effort, but with the right advice, this could save you tens, if not hundreds of thousands of pounds, in some cases with bigger landlords, uh, millions. Um, the, the firm is just dealing with a case where there's 38 properties in, in one person's name. Now, this, this process will save them millions of pounds. They're already saving tax right now. Okay, so do contact me if, you, if you're interested in that. And, and also look out for my previous post on why 85,000 land, right select landlords are, are quitting the, the, the market. This is down to more legislation, more hassle, and, and higher taxes as well. Now, I want to also talk to you about a personal debt because personal debt in this country in the uk and and in other countries like america is is soaring um you know average amount of debt held is, is reaching you know, thousands of pounds per person just in credit cards alone and half of citizens advice clients people that go to citizens advice in the uk are, are now behind with their payments and their budget this means that uh, they're incurring late penalty notices their their, their credit rating has been ruined Sometimes through no fault of their own, they're just going along, working. They've got the, they've got this and they've got that, and then suddenly, uh, maybe their income is going down, or their income is not keeping up with you know the eleven percent inflation that we've got, or the official eleven percent, more like twenty percent on things like food and, and petrol and that sort of thing. So they're not keeping up, and now they're falling behind. That is down to money management, but I'm not blaming anybody here. I'm just saying th these are are the facts. Now with with these soaring interest rates gas bills electricity bills all all going up um unlike unlike savings interest rates uh th this is now pushing more people over over the edge and it's actually pushing people into using credit cards and overdrafts just to buy basic things like food okay so it, it's now getting serious um and people are now left with 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 almost no money to, to even save uh so they're not even able now to 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 carry you know to, to save money as as they used to be able to so so this is you know a growing uh, time bomb sticking away here that, that the charities are reporting and you can see here i'll just share this screen with you here sorry if you're listening to this on a podcast but i'll put it up on the on the notes half the people now are seeking help from citizen advice are now in the red and you can see here that you know that the people are not able to save that they're, they're getting to the stage where they've got no money left and they're just paying out this money for the basic things, food, travel, all these sorts of things. Some have been asked to go back to the office now, so they're incurring higher uh, traveling costs as well. Uh, so so th this is, is, is a very serious situation. 
Um, I'll just quickly show you now uh, the markets today. Nasdaq down again. Um, this 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 is uh, the stock market in America. It's down. Uh, it's down today, but it's it's down quite heavily on on previous months. There, um, you know, you, you only got to look at the way the stock market is has been going over the past uh, this year. Really, I guess um, the markets are reacting quite badly to what, what's going on. And, and today you see the Dow Jones is down. It's only slightly down, uh, but, but markets like the S&P 500, I think are down 30% on, on their high. Um, you can see they're down a bit today, but let, let's look more longer term here. You can see how the downward trend is. So uh, I reported in my last podcast that a lot of people, pot, pension pots have gone down due to the uh, falling value of their the shares in the in the pension, but also the bonds, and don't forget the, the pensions market almost collapsed after the mini budget a few weeks back. So just just getting back to uh, the, the debt situation now. Uh, let, let's go back here, and we, we'll look at ways that you can you can deal with this. The citizen advice have a guide. I'm going to put the full details up on on, on the notes and on my blog at moneytipsdaily.com, but. Basically, what they're saying is, is five little tips here that work out exactly how much you owe, who do, who to, and how much you'll need to pay each month. This goes back to my smart money training is, is actually looking at exactly what your out, outgoings are, you know, what your assets, what your liabilities are, when they when they hit your account in, in various parts of the month. Because if, you, if you're going along one morning and suddenly something, a direct debit from your credit card hits your account and puts you into the red, puts you overdrawn. If it's an un unauthorized overdraft, it could cost you 40% interest. And, and that's on top of maybe penalties as well that you might incur by, by perhaps if they don't pay the direct debit, for instance. Okay, secondly, identify your most urgent debts. Rent, mortgage, energy, council tax are, are all called priority debts uh, because no, you've got to be able to pay your rent. You've got to have a roof over your head, your rent or mortgage, right? Energy, you've got to be able to heat your home. Uh, council tax. Um, councils don't like it when you don't pay tax. They'll take you to a magistrate's court. Um, and then, then you've got to prioritise who, who you can pay. Calculate exactly how much you, you, you can cover in debt repayments. Create a budget, um, adding up uh, your essential living costs and, and all these debt repayments, food and that sort of thing. And, and then take away this from your, your income. So it's again down to maybe creating a spreadsheet. These are my outgoings. This is what I cover in, in the smart course, actually. Um, and then four is to see how much uh, you could boost your income. You know, if you can't cut your cost down, if you cut your, all your essential costs down to the minimum, you, you know, you're going to all the cheap discount stores, maybe you're using food banks, then you've got to look at ways of increasing your income or maybe even applying for benefits. If you're on low income, you might be able to achieve uh, something on, on benefits. Uh, you could ask for a council tax reduction. You could look at these things. Um, and, and you can also talk to your suppliers and ask for lower tariffs on things. Um, maybe talk to your energy provider, say, you know, I'm in trouble here, uh, even your, your TV package. Again, you might say, why have people got a TV package when, when they're in debt? Well, precisely, why, why would you need Sky and Netflix and Disney, you know, when you can't pay uh, your mortgage, for instance. So you've got to look at these priorities. Maybe it's a time to cut those things out, as, as millions of people have, and, and they are doing that. But you'll only find this out if you start really looking at what your outgoings are and looking at your, your, your bank statements and say, what am I paying this for? What am I paying that for? That's covered in my, in my free training, by the way. Um, so if you, if you think you cannot pay any of these debts and you, know, you find dealing them overwhelming, uh, you know, then you've got to look for support. Don't bury your head in the sand. And, and literally some people have committed suicide over debt. So, so you don't need to do that. You're not alone. There is help available through charities like Citizens Advice and uh, Step Change is another charity. Uh, but also you, you can you can go through a process to uh, minimize, you know, to write off part of your debts, to reduce your debt repayments, to spread them over longer periods uh, with, with professional advice. If you need that sort of advice, you, you can uh, obviously contact me as well, but just drop me an email. But um, step change have said that the cost of living is the main reason that people are going into this debt. And the credit reporting company ClearScore reports that there's a 7% increase in the last year in the amount of people using overdrafts. And overdrafts have become very, very expensive. 
The banks pay savers half a percent, three quarters of a percent. They charge borrowers in overdraft sometimes 40 percent and credit cards 18, 20 percent uh, you know, without blinking an eyelid. So these costs are going up while saving rates are, are not with, with the high street banks. And National Energy Action reports that the number of UK houses going in, households going into fuel poverty will increase from 4 million right now to 8.4 million by next year. These are because the energy costs are going up. Um, so if you're struggling with that, you're struggling with debt, go to these charities. If you want to learn how you can maybe do something, if you're in serious problems, like you've got tens of thousands or, you know, or more of debt, you want to know how to do something about it, then contact me and we can put you in touch with professionals who could restructure your debt perhaps, um, maybe write off some of the debts and, and all sorts of things you can do. You don't need to struggle by by yourself and, 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 and consider things like, you know, taking your own life because you're in debt. It's, it's really not necessary. Talk to somebody. Uh, so look, that that's all I can say is learn how to manage your money. Recessions actually create more opportunities for you. I mean, at the moment, there are plenty of jobs. There are plenty of part-time jobs you can do. There are loads of vacancies. They may not be the ideal job that you want to do to further your career, but there is work out there. Unlike in, in a lot of recessions I've been living through, there weren't the jobs. In fact, now there's jobs in a recession. It's, it's, it's really strange. And the Bank of England said this is going to be the worst recession on record. I think it's after Christmas we're going to really see the, the effects of this. Uh, people are usually spend all their money at Christmas. That's something you can avoid. I put 21 tips on that uh, in, in a recent podcast. Don't get into debt over Christmas, uh, but they do create opportunities if you have the right mindset. If you have a fear mindset, if you're scared of what's going on, you've got a, what, what a friend of mine used to call the worry guts, then you can't think straight, right? You're just in a panic. You're like, you know, the, the, the rabbit stuck in the headlights, right? And, and they're just going to get hit. Uh, they're frozen in the headlights. Don't be like that rabbit, okay? Check out my training. On, on the link below and learn how to get control of your finances immediately or certainly within 28 days. And, and also look at my books, uh, Borrow and Grow Rich, a recent book you can find on Audible and uh, on uh, Amazon. Uh, you know, I talk about how using other people's money can help people get wealthy and has done for hundreds of years. So that's all for now. Check out my, my free training below and I'll see you in, in the next broadcast. But in the meantime, uh, don't panic. I know things are tough, but you know, we'll get through this as, as we always do. Winters come and go. We're in a winter now, but they don't last forever. So uh, just keep your chin up and learn how to manage your money. Thanks a lot. Bye for now.